this Saturday when I was at the junkyard. A truck pulled up and dropped off a whole bunch of metal scrap, but peeking out of it I saw a whole bunch of knobs and stuff. Turns out they had dropped off a whole bunch of old test gear. This is one of the first ones I pulled out of the pile. It's a Tektronix Type 105 square wave generator. From what I can find on Google, apparently this thing dates to about 1950. I should take a look. I already took the case off, but take a look inside. I was surprised to see the, the number of vacuum tubes. And it's got a freaking cooling fan, which surprisingly still spins very nicely. A whole bunch of little vacuum tubes, and then up at the top, and there's some metal shelled vacuum tubes. It's even got their logo on the transformer. Now this, the other side's the fun bit. filled with tons of carbon composition resistors. The main frequency output range switch is like a nine wafer freaking rotary switch. I'm pretty sure the rectangular capacitors that are color coded are mica, but just tons of freaking resistors all very nicely laid out like it would actually be fairly easy to service this unlike a lot of older vacuum tube equipment where it's just a complete rat's nest of layers on top of layers like if I needed to replace that resistor it wouldn't be that big of a deal and then there's the freaking multi-tap transformer that supplies power to everything it's got let's see numbers up to 23 But of course, you know, being at the scrapyard, they already lopped the power cord off, so I've wired in a new one rather haphazardly. And I've got it wired up through this 200 watt light bulb I found, so now I've got the Now I haven't powered this up yet, so I'm going to try and do it through this uh, light bulb to make sure there's no short circuits or anything. But I've got my huge old power stat variac, 15 amps, and I've got it wired up with this light bulb in series. So I'll keep an eye on it, see what happens. Uh, turn the AC on, and start cranking up the volts. It's getting pretty bright. No, right. I just have a jumper plugged in here. All right, now that I've actually got the correct wires plugged in, let's try it again. It's drawing some current. That should be about 120 volts. 1.1 1 .1, 1 amp. The fan's running, and it looks like we do have some tube heaters, so I think the transformer is alright. I guess the power light is burned out. There it goes. Yep, filament's definitely busted. Alright, well, seems to be for the most part okay. So I flip on the DC and see what happens. 
bulb got a little brighter. Looks like we got some action. Alright. Get my scope hooked up. Alright, I got the scope hooked up here. Digital. Do a pretty slow scan here. And I'll turn it all the way down. 100 hertz. Or KC for kilo cycles. Alright, turn the DC on. One volt per division. Output amplitude. Mm. Frequency. Symmetry. Now I think I'm just going to have to wire it up to the mains and see how it does. I mean, it's very possible some of these crusty looking caps could be totally dead. But surprisingly, there don't seem to be too many capacitors in here, so if I have to recap the wax and electrolytic caps, it wouldn't be too big of a deal. Alright, I've got full power applied. Keep an eye on the current. AC. 2 point. And yeah, it's dropping. Tubes are glowing pretty good. Two point three amps. Not sure how long I need to let this warm up for, but All right, let's see if we get anything in DC. Current draws up to 3.2 amps. Alright. Huh. Interesting. It looks like it's trying to do something. Not getting anything on the scope though. Oh no, it is. Look at that. Uh, more voltage, there we go. We have a freaking square wave out of this thing, that's freaking fantastic. Uh, let's see, where's the settings here? Cursors. Calculate frequency. Oh, that's not good. Looks like something just failed. Oh, yeah, I didn't even turn off the AC. Something must have been drawing excessive current somewhere. Yeah. 
Uh, there's a bunch of hot stuff, but I mean, 100 degrees isn't too big of a deal. I mean, those are beefy resistors. Hmm. And of course, the tubes are going to be hot. Mm, all right. <clears throat> yep, fuse blue. Three, three amps. Looking carefully at this fuse, it looks kind of crusty inside. I'm wondering if <clears throat> maybe just due to its age it blew prematurely. Because if this is a three amp fuse, I mean, we were under that by a decent margin. Come on, focus. There it goes. It just seems like the the solder that's in there kind of just sort of flaked apart. I'll have to see if I can find another 3 amp fuse. Alright, well I didn't have much luck finding a replacement uh, 3 amp fuse in that size. I had a bunch of smaller ones, but nothing like this. I'll have to make a trip to the hardware store. But for now, I have bypassed the fuse holder. I did manage to find this little two amp circuit breaker so I have wired it in and replace in uh, I have wired it instead of the light bulb same type setup where it's in series with the load I'll put my clamp meter back on there it goes Oh wait, that's the ground wire. Never mind. There we go. Alright, AC switch is on, DC is off. I guess it has some time delay or something, because it seems like something kicks on as it heats up. Let's look for that. Turn it off. Sitting at 2.1 amps. Alright, DC on. Look at that. Fourteen hertz. And I'll adjust the frequency here. Seems like it gets jittery at the low end. It's definitely working though. Thirty, fifty, seventy. All right, so it's a hundred and eleven hertz full scale. Yeah, it seems to be pretty out of calibration, but 
And what do you expect when the freaking capacitors look like this thing? But with it right at, yeah, let's see if I can get that a little better. Yeah, right, right at 100 hertz. And I got 58 on the scope. Alright, let's ramp it up. <laughs> Two fifty one and a half kilohertz, ten kilohertz. <laughs> zoom in here. One point four seven kilohertz. Range of 10. Yeah, that meter's way off. It works though, I'm surprised. Let's see, do some offset adjust here. Seems like we have a negative going uh, square wave. <laughs> Something's getting hot. 3.6 amps. Something's cooking. see what it is. Ooh. I think that may have been a cap. Well, now that I'm back from making sure the smoke detector doesn't go off, I took a closer look and yes indeed, apparently I believe it's capacitor 37. There's brown juice coming out of the back end of it. It's freaking gross. That's the problem with firing up this old equipment. I had hoped that using my Variac and I had hoped that using my Variac along with the uh, the light bulb, you know, dim bulb tester would have helped to reform the capacitors, but you know, sometimes they just don't last. Especially when they haven't been powered up for a long freaking time. So, that change in current draw I was seeing is probably one of the, uh, that C37 shorting internally. Or maybe there's just one of the, the dielectric broke down or something, who knows. Uh, let's see, that's about halfway down in the back. Yeah, so it's one of those big cardboard tube electrolytics. Oh man, you can see it made a mess inside, down there too. Well, I'll have to see if I can find a modern replacement in my junk box. I mean, really, I should probably just change them all. So we got three up there, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe ten total. Major electrolytics. It's neat to see that I was working though. Probably just change out all the wax and electrolytics and it would probably actually be back close to spec.